yesterday, an estimated 5.1 billion people, that is 63% of the global population, watched the state funeral of the late Queen Elizabeth II, making it the most watched event of all time. Most people did so as a way of showing their respects or just out of curiosity, but sadly, the conspiracy theorists were busy already peddling their latest set of harebrained ideas. People who believe the QAnon conspiracy theory, which to be frank is one of the stupidest conspiracy theories of all time, and QAnon supporters are mostly ultra far right mentally retarded Americans, although as is the way of things we've now got plenty of them over here as well. I mean these are people who make flat earthers look like credible cosmologists and it should come as no surprise there's a lot of crossover between QAnon supporters and militant anti-vaxxers. Intelligent they are not. They are now claiming that the Queen did not pass away on the 8th of September. They are making the frankly ridiculous claim that she died months ago and possibly was assassinated. Of course, if you did want to have someone taken out, it's best to wait until they're in their mid-90s with mobility issues. I'd have thought any hitman who turned up would have said, look lads, keep your money, just wait a few weeks. And I also would have thought that anyone capable of wiping their own ass would see how stupid this theory is. But of course we're dealing with the tinfoil brigade. But this time, they're saying they've got proof. Spoiler alert, no they haven't. The theory, and I'm using that term extremely loosely, begins with events which we know are factually correct. At the beginning of the year, the Queen helped to pay off a woman who'd accused Prince Andrew of inappropriate behaviour when she was underage, or at least underage in the USA. We also know that Prince Andrew was friends with that fucking monster, Jeffrey Epstein, and that the Prince claimed he'd never met his accuser, which makes this photo somewhat fucking awkward. But the woman was effectively paid her hush money. We'll never know for certain what the Duke of York did or didn't do. The grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He also met some teenage girls, but he can't remember them. The frankly idiotic idea, the false claims made by QAnon, is there is a global cabal of elite child molesters and murderers who are being fought by former President Donald Trump. Does any of that sound realistic? Because the bit for me that stands out is that Donald Trump is fighting them because there's no way on fucking earth he would keep quiet about that. The man is not known for his subtlety or silence. In fact, we've known since 2016 there are no aliens in Area 51 because 10 minutes after being sworn in as president, Trump would be screaming about it and claiming that Barack Obama's from another fucking planet. And now QAnon supporters are claiming incorrectly that the late Queen was on the cusp of exposing this global network of paedophiles so she had to be silenced. Because that's far more likely than a 96 year old woman with failing health dying of natural causes. What the fuck is wrong with these people? But that's all speculation. Let's get to the proof that the QAnon club claimed to have. The proof that Her Majesty was murdered earlier in the year but her death was announced on the 8th of September. Well Q whoever he, she or they, them is, first posted in 2017. And the 8th of September this year marks 1,776 days since that first mention on 4chan. So 1776, the year that America gained independence from the UK. That's it, that's their proof. Now I would have thought that anyone who doesn't need to wear earplugs to stop their brains falling out would see the number 1776 and think that's an unusual coincidence, but a coincidence nonetheless. But we're not dealing with normal, rational people. We're dealing with truth seekers who ironically never tell the fucking truth. One prominent member of the QAnon movement has said he does not believe in coincidences. But they can be proved to happen. So this guy won't believe in something we know to be true but believes in everything which we don't. All this begs the question, were we to go along with this crap from the tinfoil club, which we aren't, but if we were, if the Queen was assassinated or bumped off at the beginning of the year, then who have we been looking at up until her final appearance on the 6th of September? But to this, the conspiracy theorists have an answer. A nonsensical answer that can't be supported with any form of evidence, but an answer nonetheless. They are claiming that for the last few months, we've been watching a hologram. 
Sounds like someone has been watching too much Star Trek in his mother's basement when he's not watching crap YouTube videos or wanking. There has been a hologram of the Queen before, around 10 years ago, forming part of an art exhibition. And of course, holographic technology has come on leaps and bounds. There are now concerts where all of the performers are holograms. But holograms only work in very specific conditions. And are we honestly meant to believe, those of us who don't think that every fucking thing is a conspiracy, that there is a holographic projector good enough to fool the entire world? The problem with conspiracy theories is they always fall apart when subjected to logic and or reason. Here, the truther will usually fall back on another conspiracy theory to back up his original argument, but that won't have any evidence to support it either. But if we were to go with it, if we were to say there is a piece of technology so good it can fool all of us, I have one question. How many fucking people would need to be in on it? Because surely the palace staff would wonder why Her Majesty hadn't touched any of her food or drink for six months, and her chauffeurs would become suspicious. If the Queen's method of entering her Bentley differed from the conventional manner of getting in through the door and instead apparently teleported into the back seat. And although he doesn't come across as the most sane or stable of persons, the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, I'm sure would have noticed with his weekly meetings with the monarch that when he went to take her hand, his hand would pass straight through it. And the whole hologram thing is being built on one issue. When the new Prime Minister Liz Truss met the Queen, there was only a photograph taken not video. That's what the tinfoil brigade are basing this on. They're saying it's a deep fake. But which is more likely, a massive cover-up or the Queen not wanting to be filmed because she was very frail and very ill? And we know she was very ill because two days later she was dead and that's as ill as it's possible to be. Hopefully after this video things will go back to normal for me and I'll go back to being a bit more upbeat. Also this will probably be the last video I make mentioning her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, because her reign is over and now the period of national mourning is also over. And to be blunt, it's time to let the woman rest. Sadly though, I think those of a conspiracy theory mindset won't be doing the fucking same. As ever, thanks for watching.